In this video, we're going to investigate the components of a basic introductory Arduino kit. The Arduino kit will have all the components you need to start building basic circuits and hook them up to your Arduino board so that you can program them. You can see that the kit includes things like resistors, LEDs, breadboards, motors, and even an LCD screen. Let's start with the breadboard. The purpose of the breadboard is to create a temporary place where you can build circuits. You can use male wires and plug them directly into the breadboard. They're very easy to disconnect. Later, if you want to create a permanent circuit, you will have to solder the components together. You can see this breadboard contains several components, including resistors, LEDs, and male wires. The male wires are plugged in directly to the Arduino board. You can also use a female wire if you wish, but you have to plug that in to the external pin. Then simply combine the female wire with the male wire. Alternatively, if your wires are too short, you could plug in two male wires and then connect the two using alligator clips. This will extend how far away you can put your components from the Arduino board. This particular circuit is actually looking at an RGB LED. In the RGB LED, each leg can be used to control a different color of the LED, red, green, or blue. Here's a circuit diagram showing how the different components of the breadboard can be assembled. Notice that all of the components have to be connected to each other. So we have the ground wire, a resistor going to the ground leg, and then resistors connecting each of the R, G, and B legs to special wires, which then go to the digital pins of the Arduino. The purpose of the breadboard is to connect all of these components temporarily. Your kit will also come with many different resistors. The resistors can be identified by the color bands that are printed onto them. You can use the resistor color code chart to determine the exact value of the resistor. See my other video for how to do the calculation. Next we have a potentiometer. The potentiometer has three different legs. It's a variable resistor. This allows you to put it into a breadboard and turn the knob to adjust the resistance value. This can help in things like making an LED brighter or dimmer, and it can also adjust the volume of a small speaker. The purpose of a capacitor is to temporarily hold a charge. It can hold electrons, almost like a battery, and then discharge them at a later time. For example, here we have an LED circuit. When I disconnect the circuit, the LED immediately turns off. With the addition of a capacitor, there will be extra electrons that are discharged after the circuit is disconnected, allowing the LED to turn off slightly slower than normal. Next we have several different sensors. Here's a photo sensor. A photo sensor is basically just like a resistor, but it's a variable resistor. So depending on how much light touches the surface, the resistance will go up or down. Here we have an ultrasonic sensor. It's really great for measuring distances. It'll have four different pins and you need to program it to send out a small sound, which is in the ultrasonic frequency. And when it returns, it will measure how long it took for the echo to return and this will give you a calculated distance. You can also get various thermoresistors. Thermoresistors work just like the photosensor. It's a variable resistor with two legs, and depending on how much heat you apply to it, it'll change the resistance. Servo motors come in a variety of different sizes. This one's a micro servo. Pretty much the way it works is there's a little motor inside, and it will allow the servo head to rotate up to 180 degrees. It's great for opening and closing different devices. You can also get 360 degree rotation servos. 
DC motors are very popular if you're going to have something with wheels, like a small car. This particular DC motor needs to have wires soldered on to these two metal plates, and then one will be the power and one will be the ground. DC motors rotate very, very rapidly, so you're going to need a gearbox if you want it to rotate slower. Inside of it is a little electromagnet, and as you apply the power, the magnet spins. The DC motor can be turned on or off by applying power. One way you can do this in the Arduino is by using a transistor, which is an electronic switch. That way you can program what causes the DC motor to turn on and what causes it to turn off. The way the transistor works is it allows a larger current to flow only when the base wire is turned on. So the three legs will have the power, the ground, and the base. And then pretty much when you program the base to be on, the larger current is allowed to flow through. Here's an example of how to hook up the transistor with your DC motor. For more information on the circuit and the programming, see my additional video. This is a piezo buzzer. It's a small speaker which allows you to make little noises in your project. Some of the noises will sound very electronic, but you can use a tone library to make it sound more like regular notes and therefore play little songs. Here we have an eighth bridge driver. The way the eighth bridge driver works is it's like four separate transistors in one. This will allow you to control the DC motor in rotating both forward and backward. See my additional video for exactly how to hook it up and program it. At some point you may want to work with a stepper motor. Stepper motors can rotate 360 degrees over and over again. So they're a little bit more flexible than a flex sensor in that sense. They're also very programmable so that you can program each step individually. They're going to be more accurate than a regular DC motor. However, as you can see, they have a bunch of different wires and four different pins that need to be programmed. Here we have an LCD screen. LCD screens are great for projects where you want to display information such as directions, words, or even data, but you don't want to have your project constantly connected to a computer. This particular one has four different pins that need to be hooked up, and then you have to program it specially to display your data to the LCD screen. Here you have a button. The button has four different legs, and the button can be used to turn your project on or off by hooking it into the circuit in series. When you press the button, the circuit is closed, and when you don't press it, the circuit is open.